In this presentation, we will take a look at an example problem putting financial statements together related to the Capital Projects Fund. We're going to have our information on the left-hand side. This is going to be our trial balance for the Capital Project Fund, the assets in green, the liabilities in orange, the light blue being what would be equivalent to the equity section in a for-profit organization fund balance section here, the dark blue being what would be equivalent to the income statement section in a for-profit type of organization, temporary accounts those accounts that would then close out to what would be the equity section in a for-profit organization or fund balance section here. We're going to take this information and record or construct first the balance sheet for the uh, capital projects fund. We've got here the debits being in non-bracketed numbers, the credits being bracketed, therefore the debits minus the credits will be equal to zero as is shown here by uh, the green zero, of course, like any type of balance sheet, if we find a home for all the accounts on the trial balance, we're going to be in balance converting from the double entry accounting system of debits minus the credits to the double entry accounting system represented in terms of assets equal liabilities plus equity or fund balance or assets minus liabilities equals fund balance. So we're going to start off with cash. Cash is going to be up top. We're going to say that cash and pulling over the cash item to get to uh, the 3147 Then we have the investments. You'll note what we do not have is a subcategory breaking out current and long-term assets. Why? Because we're in a fund accounting. We're in a governmental type fund. The fund accounts of the governmental funds are on modified accrual basis as opposed to accrual basis. And therefore, we only have current assets because we only have one kind of asset between current and long term we don't need to have a subtotal we just need to know that this is a fund accounting and it's on a modified accrual basis therefore the assets are current the investments here we're considering to be short-term investments because they're short-term investments that will then be used in the future shortly for the funding of whatever the capital project is that we are constructing a bridge a building some long-term type of asset so if we total that up, that's going to give us the total assets of the 4,381,500. We're going to pull that out to the outer column. Then we're going to go to the liabilities and fund balances. So we found a home for these two. We're down to the liabilities. We'll start off, of course, with the liabilities with a colon saying we're going to liabilities colon. And then we're going to list out the liabilities. We'll start out with the uh, vouchers payable, pulling them into the inside. Once again, you'll note we don't have current long term, all current because fund accounting it's going to be the modified accrual basis then we've got the ninety one thousand five. that's going to be the contracts payable for the retained percentage so we have the retained percentage for the contract payable then we have due to other funds so these are the basically inter fund uh, transfers that are due to another fund and then we're going to sum those up in the outer column so we have the total liabilities then adding up the 91 the 91.5 the 90 or the 27.5 adding up to the 210,000. then we're going to go to the fund balance now the fund balance is just going to basically in essence be the sum of all the activity from the blue accounts now there's going to be a bit of a modification there because you'll note that we have these encumbrances and the encumbrances outstanding we can think of them in two different ways. Uh, we could say that they're going to cancel each other out. So if we were just to sum up all the blue columns, th they would cancel each other out or we can eliminate them. In other words, if we were to take a look at the fund balance, we, we're coming up to this 4,171,500. We could think about that as the, I'm going to say the credits minus the debits, the credit of 2430,000 plus the 670,000,000. And then plus the five four five zero 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 minus the debit of two four three zero 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 minus this debit of the one nine four eight five zero zero. That's going to give us the four million one forty one five we see here. Or of course, we could eliminate the uh, encumbrances outstanding and encumbrances, adding up just the six seven zero 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 plus the five four six five. Uh, zero the five four five zero 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 minus and then we're taking the one nine four eight five zero zero and that'll of course bring us to the same number so just recall that we're not going to be including the encumbrances and the encumbrances outstanding we're not going to include either of them when we think about the, the full basically blue area what would be the equity section in a for-profit organization as we relate that to the to the balance sheet 
So these two eliminate them and themselves. And we can see that here when we go to the, what would be equivalent to the income statement. You'll note that we won't be including the encumbrances as we calculate what would be the equivalent of net income in a for-profit organization. So then if we take the, the total, we have the total fund balance. And finally, we have the total liabilities and fund balance being the 4,381,500. That being equivalent to matching the assets of uh, the 4,381,500. Now let's go take a look at the statement of revenues, expenditures, and changes in fund balances being equivalent to, in essence, the income statement. We're going to be thinking about those accounts down here in the dark blue area, and we're going to be adding those up as we would in a for-profit type of organization, credits minus the debits, revenue kind of accounts minus the debit kind of accounts. But we're going to have this encumbrance we're going to have to deal with, and we have these other financing sources which is going to be predominantly where a lot of the money is going to come from, all of it in this case, because note we're, we're in a construction project fund or capital project fund making something, and therefore we're not re really getting most of the money from a revenue type of activity. Typically it's going to come from some other financing source, proceeds from a bond, transfers from some other area such as the general fund or something like that. So we're going to start off with expenditures because we don't have any revenue. So again, that's going to be unusual for a normal type of income statement. But for the capital project fund may not be that unusual because we're financing it most likely with something other than revenue from the capital project fund. It's going to be some kind of financing outside of that. Therefore, we're going to start with the expenses because these two items, which are going to be kind of like our revenue, other financing sources, are going to be down below because there are other sources. So we're going to have the const uh, construction expenditures. That, so that's going to be the only expenditure we have because this is the project that we're tracking. Then we have other financing sources and uses. That's when we're going to get to these items, the other financing sources and uses. In this case, sources. Other financing sources from the interfund transfer in. So we're going to move that that item here. And of course, we're, we're moving from debits and credits to a plus and minus format. Then we have other financing sources from the bonds proceeds. If we add those up, we get the total of 6,120,000. So now we have the expenditures up top, had no revenue, but we have these expenditures. And then we have these other financing sources. So we can subtract those two out to get the excess of revenue and other, uh, other, sor other sources over expenditures of the 4,171,500. And then we're, what we're going to do now, this is basically kind of our income statement bottom line, equivalent to basically the net income what we would get from our temporary accounts, kind of the revenue minus the expense type of calculation here. Notice again, as we do that, we're not including the encumbrances. So if I was just to sum up all, all the dark blue accounts, it doesn't work because the encumbrances mess it up. So in other words, we're taking the 670000 plus the 5450000 minus the 1948500, not including the uh, 2,430 of encumbrances. So that's gonna be our items. And now what we'll do is we'll tie this out to the, what would be equivalent to the equity section or the fund balance section here in governmental uh, accounting in the capital projects fund. So we're gonna tie this out to basically the balance sheet type of account, the, the point in time type of account, the fund balance. And so what we'll do is we'll take the fund balance at the beginning, which in our case is zero. That's going to be similar. That account is similar to like a retained earnings account or a capital account if we're in a corporation or sole proprietor respectively. And it's zero right now because there was nothing in it at the beginning of the time period. If this capital project had lasted more than a year, it would have something in it such as similar to a retained earnings type of account. At the end of the process, we will close out, of course, the temporary accounts to it. And therefore, we'll, ha we'll have something in it. So we're going to start at zero. And then we're going to close out all the temporary accounts, all the blue accounts, except we're not closing out the, the uh, encumbrances. And we haven't included them in what would be equivalent to kind of the net income line. So our total then is going to be that 4,171,500. That's going to be in the ending fund balance. That, of course, matches what we see on the balance sheet. If we roll back up to the balance sheet, here's the balance sheet. So we basically tie those two items out, the balance sheet tying into the basically equivalent of the income statement, equivalent statement of revenue expenditures and changes in fund balances.